I invite you to stand. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we may share in his victory over death. Eternal God, who made this most holy fire to shine with the brightness of your one true light, sanctify this new fire. We pray, and so set us aflame with the fire of your love, that with pure hearts and kindled affections, we may attain to the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega. All time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard and keep us. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, let be to God. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels. 
forgiving deeds in history, remembering how he saved his people in ages past, and in the fullness of time sent his Son to be our Redeemer. And let us pray that God may bring to completion in each of us the saving work he has begun. You may be seated. The reading of the creation. A reading of the creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters he call, gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit, which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanses of the heaven and gave light to the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures. And let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, 
and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything he had made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading of the fall. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now, lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the, from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Yeah. 
Let us pray. O God, you sent your blessed Son, the seed of the woman, that he might crush the serpent's head and make all creation new. Grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. A reading from Isaiah's del Israel's deliverance at the Red Sea. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is it not this that we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may, be, may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord, the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. All of the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. 
Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. I invite you to stand. to be a sign for us of the salvation offered to all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. A reading of the Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, 
There were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews upon them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. salvation you speak the word to your scattered people and raised us up from the valley of death breathe your spirit upon your church that we may live and stand before you confident in your risen son our savior jesus christ A reading of Jonah and the fish. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of 
Amittai, saying, Rise up, go to Nivana, that great day, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. And he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. And they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it from them. But Jonah had not gone down into the in, had gone down into the inner part of the ship, and had laid down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, "What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give thought of us." that we may not perish. And they said to one another, come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, what is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then he said to him, they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not on us innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea, sea ceased from its raging. Then the men, men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and all your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. And the roots of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought me up, brought up my life from the pit. O Lord, my God, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. And those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land.
of your Son, you brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church that spirit of adoption, which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The consequences are ruinous. 
They are sent out of the garden into the untilled wilderness, but not before being given a glimpse of hope. Hope for the resolution of this crisis. One of the children of the human family, somewhere and at some time, will rise to deal with that snake and set things right. But the question is raised, what about that project to expand the boundaries of the garden? What about humanity's task to fill the earth and collaborate in the Creator's benevolent rule? You see, humans are out there now, outside the garden, with the snake. And the garden has been locked down. A heavenly creature placed at the entrance to keep the snake and its minions, the chaos and disorder of the wilderness, out. The garden that was meant to expand now risks a breach. And the place of fellowship is under guard. Now the solution lies in a particular family who we meet in the story of Abraham and his children, the people of Israel. The same family who we see liberated from slavery in the reading from the Exodus account of Stephen. This family, upon their release from captivity, is brought to a mountain by the Creator in collaboration with his appointed representative, Moses, where they will meet with the Creator and be assigned a weighty task. They are charged with a priesthood. Indeed, the whole nation will be priests of the Creator, representing Him to the rest of the human family and the rest of creation. But more specifically, they are charged with the service of a holy space where God and humans can meet. And the priests in charge of this holy space are appointed to work and Chabad and Shema. They are, we might say, enrolled in a kind of intensive training program for how to be the kind of people who wait for the Creator to give them wisdom to discern between what is good and what is not, to properly maintain that meeting place. Under the tutelage of the law, the priests learn how to distinguish between what is clean and what is not. They are instructed how to keep the entrance, that meeting place, secure. How to keep death out. How to keep chaos out. How to keep the snake out. Tragically, they don't fare much better than the first humans in the garden. In fact, their leaders take on more and more characteristics of the snake than they do characteristics of the Creator who they're called to represent. Their violence, exploitation, and indifference to the needs of the vulnerable so pollute their priestly people that the holy space is yet again in danger from a breach. And the priestly nation is overcome by their hubris and carried away into exile. And yet, hope is still signaled. In the book of the prophet Ezekiel, we read of the Creator's intention, in spite of the failures of an exiled people, an exiled humanity, at that, the intention to put that exiled humanity back together again, ligament by ligament, to restore fractured creation and breathe into it a renewed life. If we read a bit further in the same prophet, we are met with a striking vision of a restored temple, a holy space where the Creator once again comes to live. And out of this holy space, Ezekiel observes a small stream trickling to the east. And as he follows the stream, the stream becomes a brook. And the brook becomes an unfordable river flowing out into the wilderness. And everything it touches Life springs up. The desert is becoming a garden. Now we fast forward some time, and we encounter this man, Jesus. 
And he begins to do a very peculiar thing. He does and says certain things that would only be suitable in the context of the temple. He says to people, your sins are forgiven. He cleanses people from disease. And rather than the uncleanness getting on him, his holiness gets on the person disease. And it seems like everything he touches, life springs up. Now, this strikes a dissonant chord among the religious leaders at the time, for they know that discerning between what is clean and what is not, what is good and what is not, lies at the heart of their priestly vocation, lies at the heart of Israel's failure, in fact. If God is going to deliver his people from exile and make good on his promises, Israel needs to guard that breach, lest anything unsavory or compromising sneaks in, infiltrates the people of God. They need to keep themselves clean. But then, something amazing happens. Jesus, faced with a choice between serving and taking, surrenders himself to death even death on the cross. He says to his father, not my will, but yours be done. And as he breathes his last in that moment of complete surrender, the curtain in the temple tears. And rather than death and chaos spilling into the holy place, all of the holiness, goodness, and life in the place where heaven and earth meet rushes out. Blood and water spill out of Jesus' side. The earth splits open and the dead leap from their tombs. You see what's happening? It's the vision of the prophet Ezekiel. The holy place is not under siege. The breach is not in danger anymore. The holy place is on the move. It is rushing out from the person of Jesus like a river rushing out into the wilderness to transform it into a garden. And as he emerges from the tomb on the third day, the Creator declares to all of creation, the project for expanding the garden is back on. The snake and its minions are defeated, the door is open, and the kingly reign of the Creator is advancing on a parched earth. Every one of us who is baptized now part of that work of extending the borders of the garden. We have been equipped by virtue of our joining Christ in his death to rise with him in new life, to carry that life into a world desperate for vitality. We now share in the contagious holiness of Christ, such that wherever we go and whatever we touch, the life of the garden is enjoyed, like a desert being watered by the river that flows from the temple. Contrary to observation, the world has fundamentally changed. A claim that will most certainly be contested. The world will protest. Things are just as gloomy as they have ever been. What does an anomalous event from 2,000 years ago anything to do with the state of the world now. And if we're honest, many in the church will join the chorus of that protest. And rather than devising some clever argument for why things aren't as they seem that I could exposit in the next 30 seconds, I will just say this. Be brave and dare to look foolish. The Lord is risen and the world will never dare to have the final verse of our first hymn this evening become a mantra. This is my Father's world, let me never forget, though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, the battle is not done. Jesus who died shall
shall be better by on earth and heaven be one. God is on the move. The boys of the garden are advancing on a desperate world. So let's get to work. Let's pray. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death, and have made all things new again. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now. I invite you to stand. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounce the devil and all his works, and promise to serve God faithfully in his one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Do you hear in the presence of God and the church renew the solemn promises and vows made at your baptism and commit yourself to keep them? Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I I renounce them. Do you renounce the empty promises and the deadly deceits of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and Savior? I do. Do you joyfully receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? I do. Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life? I will, the Lord being my helper. So let us now reaffirm our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I do. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? I do. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I do. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Remember your baptism. 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 Thank you. 
Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, Keith, our Bishop, Scott, our Dean and Rector, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we pray for all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public and military service. Lord, in your mercy. For Mona Jones celebrating her birthday, and Chris and Amy Peterson on the birth of their son, Oren, we ask your blessings. Lord, in your mercy. For all those in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, Lord, in your mercy. For all those who have <laughs> departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, we, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Add your own petitions and thanksgivings at this time. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Praying together, most merciful God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to stand. The risen Christ came and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. So having made peace with God, now we have an opportunity to offer peace to one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good evening. I'd like to welcome you all here to All Saints Anglican Cathedral this evening. Thank you for joining us. A special welcome to anyone who may be visiting with us this evening. We're so happy to have you here with us. If you are visiting, if it's your first time here, uh, you'll notice in the pew in front of you, we have um, guest cards that you can fill out. Let us know that you were here. And if you'd like to receive any communication from us, you can indicate that there. And feel free to pass that off to one of the ushers as they come by with the offering plates, or you can hand that to them on, at the door. Um, we're moving, getting ready to move into the second portion of our service this evening, the Ministry of Holy Communion. We uh, would like to invite all Christians who have been water baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to receive Holy Communion with us. You are welcome at the altar. Uh, if for whatever reason you are choosing not to receive this evening, you are still welcome to join us at the altar. You can just cross your arms over your chest like so, and the priest will know to pray a prayer of blessing over you. And tomorrow, there are two services, our Easter Sunday services tomorrow. One at 7.30 a.m., that's a spoken mass, and then at 10 a.m., a sung mass with the flowering of the cross and baptisms as well. So please join us tomorrow morning for our Easter Sunday services. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God.
O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you were exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. And by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. And by his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he, gave, he, he, when he, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, "Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me." Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves and souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. And we offer you these gifts of bread and wine. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. And all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. to this your table of merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your abundant and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy grant us therefore gracious Lord so to eat the flesh of your dear son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. are the gifts of God and they are for you the people of God take them in remembrance that Jesus Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving
We thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work that you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Yes, Easter is a day, and yes, Easter is a season, but may we live as Easter people all the time. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us His children through the resurrection of His Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of His blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to, eternal, to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And now, having seen the light of the world, and having become the light to the world, let us go forth into that world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia! Alleluia!